Hello everyone, uh, my name is Henrik Olsson and uh, I'm a pre-sale engineer for HP ArcSight and I'm located in Gothenburg, Sweden. Um, I'm here today, today to speak to you about the Logger API and a simple to use uh, application I have created to do searches in ArcSight Logger without using the Logger interface. So, uh, when you try to access the application it will send you to this page. This is the authentication page and it's shown because you do currently not have a valid session within the application. So I will provide some uh, credentials here to log into the ArcSight environment. Notice that you have to uh, add the IP address of your ArcSight logger machine and the port. You also need to make sure that the server this application is running on actually has uh, communication access to this IP and port so there is no firewall blocking it or anything. Next I click login. And when I log in to the, um, to the application it sends a SOAP request to the logger API with my username and password and the API will give me back a cookie and this cookie will be stored inside the session on the server side. Um, when I first log into the application, it shows me this search pa page or panel, um, and it allows me to do searches to ArcSight Logger and choose a time period I want to use. So let's say I will search for the last 30 minutes, and I will search for ISS. The language in this search is the same as in ArcSight Logger. So if I want to restrict even more by fields, I can do so by typing in the fields here. Next I will click Start Search. Notice when I click this button, uh, I get a new tab at the top here. Uh, every time you do a search from the first page, it will give you a new tab. And this allows you to have multiple search results uh, up at the same time. And then you can do drill downs in each tab. Uh, if you like, and you can compare the results by clicking different tabs. <clears throat> this tab is created uh, by uh, using something called jQuery. So jQuery is a, a library that allows you to write easy JavaScript code to affect the DOM and the elements of an HTML page. So I'll, I'm adding new elements into the page and then loading the result using Ajax uh, making sure that everything is loaded before I actually show the panel to provide uh, a nice view of um, everything just loading very quickly. <clears throat> the result down here is um, retrieved by loading another PHP file um, and that script actually connects also using the API and the, the session cookie I retrieved earlier uh, and actually gets all the events into a data structure which I then render into a nice HTML page uh, which is shown here in the tab. If I want to go back and run another query I can do so and notice it will give me a new tab and it will give me a new result because I search for something else. So, if I go up to back to the first tab again, <coughs> you notice in the result uh, I get the actual query which were issued on the issued on the first page, ISS in this case. I have the option of selecting a new time period and an option of doing the search again. Under this, uh, you can see the amount of hits I have uh, received. Uh, in this query, it's 164, and then uh, I have the search time, the amount of time it took to retrieve the response from the ArcSight logger. Under this, I have um, a nice graph to show you the distribution of all the events in the response over the time period you selected. Um, in this case, 30 minutes, you can see that we have the most amount of events uh, at the end here. Under here you can see a field summary. This is a summary of the unique occurrences of each of these fields in the response. 
So for instance, I have 49 different names in this, like FTP user, FTP pass. And then finally, we have the events table. And the events table shows you the actual events uh, in the response. I have an option at the top here to select how many rows I want to view in the response. Let's say I want to show 20. And you can see how the table expands. I can also choose a lot more, then it can make me scroll. Or I can just show all of them and I get a long scrolling list. If I don't want to scroll, I can just select 20. And you can see here that I have paging. So let's move to the next page, next page, next page. And back again to the first page. Also, we have this search function called, which is an inline search, which is done in real time in the actual response uh, you get from logger. So if I want to restrict the amount of events, um, I can see down here, I just simply just type in here, FTP underscore pass. And now you can see that the result <coughs> sorry, uh, is restricted to just the events that contain FTP pass. If I want to do something else, I'll just delete this and add like host or something, uh, or then IP address. Yeah, you get the idea. Um, next, you can see down here in the uh, results table that yeah, if I hover over all of these things, uh, they get underlined. And that is because if you click something in the response, uh, it will actually add that to the drill down, and you can do a drill down that way. So if I only want to see the success once, I click this, you can see how the query changes up here, and I'll just hit search again. And now I get the new response with only success entries. Um, if I also want to change the time period to something else, I can simply do so. Now we have a much smaller response. Maybe these are the this is the information you're looking for. So the actual libraries used to do this, uh, I mentioned jQuery, uh, which is used to uh, use Ajax or load different elements into the page or change elements into the page and make sure that we are uh, using the entire height and width of the page, even if the, uh, the user is resizing its uh, web browser. That's all done using jQuery. Um, up here you can see this graph. This is a simple um, graph uh, which is rendered directly. It, there is no flash or anything, uh, like you can see here, no flash. Um, it's, we're using something called spark lines, uh, which actually renders a graph based on uh, information which is calculated by the PHP script that gets the results uh, from, the, uh, from the actual logger. And down here, the events table, I'm using a library called data tables, uh, which is a jQuery um, library, and that allows me to, um, to do these kind of things, uh, like with, um, with the searching and the paging and everything, and show it in a nice uh, view. I also forgot to mention but all of these uh, fields here can be sorted directly. So if I want to sort something uh, I'm just, I just click the fields and you can see how we can change the sort order for all of these fields. Everything is sortable and there is no communication with the logger uh, when I do the sorting. Everything is done right now in the browser. <coughs> And basically, that's it. If I want to log out, I simply click the log out button. And it takes me back to authentication again and forgets my cookie and all my information. Thank you.